Let's talk about critical race theory in these schools. Kenny, where, where are you from? Uh, I'm from uh, Virginia. Were you born in Virginia? I was born in Maryland. I moved to Virginia when I was three years old. Born in Maryland. Mm -hmm. So you're an American and you just happen to be of uh, Asian descent, you, you, uh, of Asian ethnicity. Your parents are Asian, but you are an American citizen. Right. What I see in this, in what the schools are doing, like Harvard, to, to Asian Americans, to people of Asian descent, is they're simply saying, because you look like those people, you can't go to this school. Mm -hmm. that's, that's it. Yeah, they're treating you based on something that you can't control about yourself. And they're also treating you based on something you didn't consent to give them. You know, uh, Harvard asked for, asked for race uh, in your college application. But even if you don't give your race, don't, they're still going to find out what race you are because they have an access to a database of all the students in the entire country. And they know not just your race. They know your, uh, they know your family's household income. They wow. know your, the neighborhood that you live in. They know the school that you went to. They know the crime rate of the school that they went to. And so regardless of how you consent to this, if you consent to give this, this information or not, they're going to treat you based on it. You know, and this is the new, this is the marriage. Harvard's admissions process is the marriage of racial profiling with data mining. That's what it is. It, it, is, it, it represents an authoritarian future. What? Where, yeah. No, no, go, no, ahead. go, go, go ahead. It represents an authoritarian future where people um, are going to get information from you without your consent and uh, th things like race, background, everything like that, and then judge you on it. That, that is what the authoritarians will eventually do, and, and Harvard's process is an example of, of, of where we're going as a culture. The main thing I see here that is, that is the most alarming is, as, as we mentioned earlier in the show, the left doesn't view individuals. They don't see individuals. Their whole system is comprised of utility. That's it. That's why they're like, how many Asians are in the school? Too many. How many white people? Too many. How many Latinos? Not enough. How many black people? Not enough. They don't care about the individuals and the work being done, and they don't care about the fact that there could quite literally be a black man who was born in Spain and he's Hispanic. He speaks Spanish. Yeah. And so they're like, ah, but his skin looks a certain way. Mm -hmm. And then you have American Americans in this country who are of any background. And they're like, we want you to go to the school simply because of how you look. What the how, what does that matter? <laughs> it doesn't matter at all. I can't believe there were at a point where they're simply saying we want people to look different. It's interesting. Why? It's the it's it's an interesting conversation because genetically, obviously, we're different. Everyone's different. And probably because of our ancestry, there's subtle differences in our genetics that are interesting to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, I I just. Oh, God, I had another part of that point that I, that I didn't. Well, the, the, the point is, regardless of certain things like I went to uh, Thailand and I was taller than everybody. <laughs> right. I certainly think through hard work and dedication and commitment and uh, you can achieve great things and become the best of the best of the best. Now, of course, there's, going, there's always going to be a Michael Phelps. He's got a wider arm span than normal. And if someone was saying like his, he produces less lactate, uh, what is it, a lactic acid or Ooh, something. Yeah. So this makes him just the best swimmer ever. Yeah, well, you know, that happens. And that's kind of why we have competition. But most people can earn experience and skills and work hard and be dedicated and make themselves better in a variety of ways. Maybe you're not the smartest. You could be the strongest. Maybe you're not the tallest. You can be, you can be super fast. You can work really hard. Muggsy Bose, man, that guy could 360 dunk. That dude could jump so high. It doesn't matter, in my opinion, what you look like. It, it matters if you have this, the determination, the, 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 the commitment, the willingness to do better, to be better. And so what the problem I have with all of this is, first and foremost, how insane is it that these people would look at a 10-year-old a Vietnamese kid whose parents came here from, from Vietnam, and they say, oh, honey, you can't go to Harvard. You look like those people too much. Mm. That's it. For the only reason you will never go to this Ivy League school, you look like those. That, that's insane to me. Yeah, These people I mean, are scumbags. Well, you know, I agree with you there. <laughs> <laughs> look, um, and I'll just show you some facts. Look, Harvard University... Um, you have to score, if you're an Asian American, you have to score 440 points higher on the SAT to have the same chance of admission wow. as a black American. Wow. Yeah. Simply that's, because you both have different color skins. Simply because you both have different color skins. Out of 1,600 if, points? If you submitted the, out of 1,600. If you, no, actually, that was out of 2,400. Oh. Back in the old 2,400 days. If you submitted an application, the exact same application, and you had the same SAT score, 
the same grades, the same objective metrics. You, the only thing you did was you changed your race from Asian to black. A Harvard admissions officer is going to look at the Asian application and they're going to say, oh, he's just like all the other Asians, You're probably groomed by his parents, overachieving, test-taking nerd, no personality. You change it to black, the story is most likely going to be, oh my gosh, this guy is the greatest thing since sliced bread. We have to admit him and give him everything. Yeah, when I was but, at I yeah, and, and it's not. And the thing is, the thing is, they they say they do this to admit the you know kids from underprivileged backgrounds. But if you look at the even the black admits at Harvard University, 70, 70 plus percent of them are upper middle class or higher, mm -hmm. and fifty percent of them are immigrants, are children of black immigrants. So they're not even admitting the kid from the south side of Chicago, you know, who you, who you may think deserves or should get that chance. They're admitting the privileged kid who looks black. Yep. What a, what a, what a disgusting uh, reality, I suppose. Does when, I, when I was growing up, I was told never to let anyone know that I was Asian if I was applying for a job. I would have to lie. I started just, putting yeah. other on my things like 10 years ago or 15 years ago. It's just so gross. I, I remember I was applying for a job and uh, I was told, oh, just just don't put Asian, put Mexican or something else. And I was like, why? Huh. And I was told Asians don't have powerful special interest groups, so they don't get special favors in government. And people are allowed to discriminate against you on the basis of your race if you tell them that you tell them the truth about, you know, your family. Is it was it what are you saying, Lydia? Doesn't it strike you as unbelievably racist for them to look at a black applicant and be like, Holy cow, this person is insanely special. Do you remember what Joe Biden said about Obama? Yes. Uh, <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> no. Is it yeah, safe for you too? He yeah, said it is. It, it's it he said the what do you say, the first articulate yeah, or the, he's so articulate he's such and such an articulate geez. gentleman, yeah. And I was like, What? Yeah. Like Poor I think they call it race reason. Realism when you talk yeah. about the actual genetic differences of, and I don't even think it's different races. Am I right to say that? Like the human, well, race species, realists believe in like hard racial differences, right? And which, uh, I mean, according to genetics, I think there are. There's a reason why skin colors come out differently. But they take you it can, to a very like take it that's the problem yeah. with it because it's a fascinating conversation just to know. But that doesn't mean that we're different, like that we have different um, senses of freedom. We're all equally you, valuable and able. Of course. Yes. And I think one of the problems with race realism is that people, uh, look, a lot of people make assumptions. It's how humans work. We look at something, we say, here's why I think, here, I think this is why it's happening. Let me test that. And then race realists think, if I see, you know, something like the bell curve, uh, and mm -hmm. I see these differences based on IQ, it, it clearly must be the racial component. And... Perhaps some of it, uh, you know, I think it was Sam Harris and a few other, uh, I think, I'm not sure who it was, Sam Harris and maybe some of the IDW people saying there's some component there, obviously, why wouldn't there be? But they think it's the end all be all absolute reason. Mm. And I think mm -hmm. that is likely incorrect. I do think there's a mix between nature and nurture for sure. But I think human potential is, is typically not met. And that means regardless of your race, if you study hard and you work hard, you can be the best of the best of the best. You might not mm. be like the number one position. But you might. But you might. It's just, it's just, it's just a, there's eight billion people, you know, it's one in eight billion to be number one. Who knows who that's going to be or why? I think part of what Kenny is seeing and part of what you see with these black kids being like the kids of Nigerian immigrants yeah. is a cultural thing. So uh -huh. Tim's talking about how that you look a certain way. So that means you're not going to have a chance to get in. Do you think it is how you look or do you think it's at least partly because of the, the Asian cultural preference? for hard work and studying and all that stuff. So, you know, this is a complicated question. I'm not a race realist. I, I think that predominantly what explains uh, disparities in, I think predominantly what, dis what uh, predicates disparities in the United States with regards to a lot of these things is cultural. I think that cultural factors, uh, for example, Asian Americans don't come to the U.S. with like a significantly higher IQ than the average person okay. and in fact studies have shown that asians with lower iq are able to overcome that lower iq because they study pretty hard yes. they work really hard and they're actually able to compete with whites at an iq bracket that's a quintile higher a quintile of standard deviation higher than them so this is this is this is this is massive this is this shows you that it's not just your iq that makes you successful you really have to put in the work and what asian americans do on average, and I'm saying this on average, every individual is different. There are a lot of Asian Americans who don't work hard, but Asian Americans individually on average study twice as many hours as the average American per week. Why and is it's, that? It's, it, well, I'll tell you this. 
I yeah. think it's cultural. It is. Like, yeah. You guys are both. I, I, I was. Yeah. I was. I was tutored by my mom when I was as like one or two, and yeah. she's she's so Korean. Great. What wow. is she? A hundred percent Korean? Like half born Korean. in Korea, half Korean? No, nope. nope. born in the United States. Okay, her yeah. parents were one of her parents was from Korea. Yep, born in Korea. I don't know exactly where, but my grandmother was one hundred percent Korean, and that trickles down a little bit, I suppose. I would imagine. I mean, I value free speech because I'm an American, because I was born here and raised here with these cultural values. If I have children, I'm going to pass those on to my children. It's not because of the way I look, but the people that are my progeny that or look, look like me then yeah. will. But, it, but it's, not, it's not even about that. You believe in free speech? Yes. And your parents came from China. There you go. The Chinese Communist Party does not believe in free speech. Right. <laughs> if people can be whatever. You know what I mean? That's why... You know, uh, there uh, there was a story that came out recently, Gallup poll. Race uh -huh. relations are worse than they've been in, like, for a really long time. And I think it's because millennials are extremely racist. I think that modern leftist and progressive millennials are the most racist we've seen in a very, very, very long time. And so that's why you see around, like, 2013 race relations plummet. Because this is when millennials start aging into the workforce, into influential positions, and they start espousing their racist ideology. Now you have racist millennials, admitted white supremacists like Robin DiAngelo espousing racist ideals. And then all of a sudden you've got a bunch of minorities being like, yo, these people are racist. What? <laughs> when Obama I, really at, did lay on that race card. During Occupy Wall Street, when the, the Occupy activists segregated all the activists by race. Dude. I remember seeing wow. that. Yeah, no joke. They it did. Crazy. They created race-based caucuses for voting on how the how the, the body would spend they money. They wouldn't in let me talk to the media. It was crazy because oh I was white. They basically. literally, they literally, wow. but they literally <laughs> had like the Hispanic caucus, the Asian caucus, the people of color caucus, the black caucus. And so I remember they split up all the groups based on race. And there was this black dude chilling because Z Zuccotti Park, where Occupy happens, is slightly downhill. So yeah. there's like this ledge that slowly turns into a very high. It's like very small at the top of the uh, by the street. And then as you uh -huh. walk down, the ground goes down. The ledge stays the same height. And he's sitting up on top of it. And I see him arguing with somebody and I walk over and I'm listening to him. And he just goes, do you have any idea what the press is going to say when they find out y'all segregated based on race? <laughs> and I started laughing and I'm like, dude, yes, like yep. these people have lost it. Um, but you know what? Their ideology is winning. That's crazy. Because We're gaining ground at least for it's now. It's so. It has the 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 question of success in America has much less to do with your race, your race, than it has to do with these cultural values that can be adopted by any race. And to say, uh, I mean, you know, hard work, studying hard, any race can do. It doesn't matter if you're Asian. They call that You can study though. hard if you're white. There was that. There was that. Did, did you, you know that? that? Yeah. Do you see that thing? If you're black. Yeah. Did you, did you see that, yeah, that yeah. graphic they had on the, was the African American uh, History the Museum or whatever? Yeah. And it said like working hard and having a schedule was oh whiteness. That to me is absolutely insane. But I, I will add, yeah. there have been several studies done uh -huh. and they found one trait that guarantees success. Or I should say one trait that was was highly correlated with success. It's IQ, right? No. No. Oh, what is it? Not even it close. isn't wealth. Is that a trait? It, yes. It isn't wealth. It isn't IQ. It isn't race. It isn't uh, national origin. It isn't gender. It's perseverance. Mm -hmm. Great. Oh, that's the for sure. One thing they found Science. among every group, every race, every gender, every age bracket, every IQ bracket, every class was those who refused to give up succeeded and those who gave up failed. Yep. That's incredible. I mean, yeah. this is one exam This is one reason why black Americans who joined the military, who joined the army actually tend to have much higher career success outcomes, both military and non-military afterwards. Huh. Um, you know, in the army, you're taught things like perseverance. You're taught things like overcoming and resilience and everything like that. And the people who are put with that kind of structure in their lives, you know, can, can really elevate. And that's why you see black Americans who are in the military, you know, are disproportionately well represented among the upper middle and, and upper classes in America. When you were um, studying the uh, the meritocracy and the, the failure of, yeah. is it Harvard? Is it Harvard that's doing these admissions things? Was that what you said? It's okay. So here's the thing about this this crazy thing that's happening at Harvard. All of this this admissions process, this race baiting and and profiling started at Harvard, but it has since it has since grown to become an entire Ivy League phenomenon. And then from there. The Ivy League exported this ideology to big corporations like Google and Facebook. Mm -hmm. And now you see Google and Facebook in their diversity and inclusion programs 
also be anti-Asian. You know, I just published this article in Quillette magazine. Asians make up 90% of Silicon Valley software engineers. Wow. 90% of Silicon Valley software engineers. But you go up each level of management, Asians get lower and lower and lower percentage mm -hmm. until in the executive level, they're only like 20% of the executive level of Facebook and Google. And, um, you know, this, this is an example of, and, and nobody is advocating for Asians to be hired more or promoted more in Silicon Valley and things like that because they don't fit the narrative because they're still considered overrepresented. Did you Meritocracy, man. Yeah, yeah. Have you if found you earn the, if you earn it, if you can do it, then there you go. Like, have you were yeah. are you able to isolate methodologies that enhance meritocracy amongst education and business? So I think that one of the things that you have to. So first of all, um, you know, I understand IQ is is correlated significantly with with performance in college, and particularly not just IQ but standardized test scores. You have to look at objective metrics like standardized test scores. Um, that people love to rip on tests. They love to rip on standardized tests. I get it. It's a lot of work. You have to study. Mm -hmm. But the standardized test measures two things that are meritorious. It measures your innate intelligence and it measures how hard you prepare, right? Because you have to prepare for tests. And if you don't study for tests, you're lazy. And if you're lazy, you're not going to do well in school. Right. So uh, now Harvard is trying to get rid of standardized tests of admissions. Um, why? They say, you know, it disproportionately... Uh, benefits the wealthy and privileged over, you know, poor black and Latino students. You know, they point to the fact that blacks tend to do worse on standardized tests than, than other people. But what they conveniently leave out is that standardized tests actually correct for wealth and privilege. Because if you're a poor kid, an immigrant kid um, who has no social connections, you're not, you're not going to be able to stand out um, except to you're not going to be able to stand out when compared next to a rich and wealthy kid, except through the standardized test. Right, right, right. You know, this is the standardized test is the only test that allows you to be able to compete side by side with a wealthy and privileged kid right. and beat them. Because typically what happens is the guy shows up, talks to the dean and says, my son would like to go here. Let me give a donation to the West Wing and <laughs> soccer team. You're funded. Lacrosse team. You're funded. And, kid gets in. And, ten, and nearly 10 percent of Harvard's new class could be considered a children of a donor, a child of a donor mm -hmm. that, that make this dean's list that Harvard uses to signify primarily children of donors. And well, then 35% of them are legacies. Wow. What's that? What's a legacy? A legacy is a, is a kid whose parents went to Harvard. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Thanks for checking out this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. If you want to see the full show, come back to this channel, youtube.com slash TimCast IRL, Monday through Friday at 8 p.m., where you can leave comments and super chat, and we actually will read your comments on the show. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and if you want exclusive members-only content, segments you can't get anywhere else, go to TimCast.com, become a member, and we even have full bonus episodes. Thanks for hanging out. And we'll see you all next time.